what do you think has been your greatest impact as a lawyer? Oh boy, you know, that's hard to say. Um, let me just start by saying that when I started practicing with the Rogers Strayhorn firm, uh, my first court appearance was just going with a uh, couple of the lawyers who were representing a lawyer in a divorce case. And during the course of the, um, the discussions, the judge uh, said something that was demeaning, and I, I heard it as racially demeaning to these lawyers, and they said nothing. So I at that time said to myself, I would never, I didn't get to be a lawyer to be insulted, and that's not going to happen to me. So maybe a few months or so later, uh, some judge said something untoward uh, you know, to me. I said, pardon me, Your Honor? Did I hear you correctly? He, he said, what the hell's going on? <laughs> so so a, part of, a part of what I felt as a mission was to try and develop some respect from the courts and, and the fellow lawyers for African-American lawyers. And I think that if I've done anything, I've done some of that. Um, but I look at people like uh, Earl Trehorn, who was my boss, great lawyer. I look at Johnny Cochran, who was my former partner, great lawyer. Um, guys who really, I think, took the profession and took the profile of the African-American lawyer to a higher level. And uh, I think if, if I could say anything that I accomplished, it is to try to really do some of that. What is the importance of diversity to those outside the legal profession, to the public at large? That's a good question. That's a very good question, one that I've really never thought about. Um, but what it reminds me of, and which is a painful reminder, is that one of the real failings in our community, the African American community, is that we can, we can almost count on uh, the fact that many, many African Americans, because of their feeling of lack of self-esteem, uh, that don't have any confidence in black professionals. And they'll go to a white lawyer in a heartbeat. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a, it was a real tough proposition trying to um, get the kind of response that I'm getting today. And a part of it was doing things for the community. And I think that that's one thing I would recommend to young lawyers, uh, I don't care who they are. If you do things for the public and they believe you have some integrity and that you care about them, then they'll care about you. Uh, another bad aspect of the law practice for me has been, um, you know, the, how can I put it? It is the disrespect that some white lawyers have for black lawyers generally. And I've experienced it in two very, um, excruciating times. Uh, was one time I was speaking with a lawyer who's a fine lawyer, really one of the top lawyers in this town. And we were both called to a meeting to discuss a telephonic uh, uh, discussion on expert witnesses. And I arrived at the office first and he came in. Uh, I, said, I said to him, well, what are you up to? He says, well, I just uh, got a verdict for $5 million in a malpractice case. He says, how about you? I said, I just settled one for five and a half million. He said, who did you do it with? Whoa. Who did you do it with? And I was so shocked. And I was so upset that I didn't answer it the way I would have answered it if I had reflected. I said, I did it myself. <laughs> In any event, the, the, that kind of thing that uh, that sort of lingers during the course of the years that I've been in the business. And uh, in recent years, there was one lawyer who, uh, after a client had been, had a death in her family and she had, it was published in the newspaper, probably a police killing. 
And um, the person had called me and I'd set an appointment with them. And then uh, <laughs> that next day or so, I guess, some lawyer went to her house and knocked on her door and told her, I heard about your problem, I thought you needed me. And uh, she said, well, Jim Montgomery is my lawyer. I have an appointment with him. He says, you know he's black, don't you? You know, I said, Jesus Christ, how much of that stuff goes on, you know? Uh, so it's, what you know, I think the community uh, doesn't really focus on issues of diversity in the profession. Uh, I would say that in the years that I've practiced, I've probably had maybe, other than uh, business or corporate clients, that with public clients, uh, I've had maybe five or six, maybe eight uh, Caucasian clients in, in all these years. So the practice of law is largely black and white for practitioners, for us private practitioners for the most part, unless you're with a big firm, etc. I know that over the years you've done quite a bit of teaching. Yes. Tell me about what you have taught in terms of civility and professionalism and, and your viewpoint on the importance of those to the profession. I would say that uh, uh, most of what I've done as a uh, teacher is to teach uh, you know, litigation techniques and, and practices. And one of the uh, admonitions that I always make to the, the students is, you know, when you're dealing with a witness in a courtroom, make an assumption that every witness is entitled to respect and, you know, don't go jumping in because you think he's a criminal. <laughs> now, if he behaves in a fashion that warrants you getting uh, a little rambunctious with him, do it. But for the most part, if you treat witnesses with respect, they'll generally treat you with respect. and they'll, You'll generally get more out of them than, than not. But in terms of civility generally, it just makes life a lot simpler when lawyers can sit down and realize that we have clients that we represent, that we are loyal to those clients, but that doesn't mean we have to be, uh, you know, uh, so litigious that we uh, fight over the least things and, and yell and scream at each other. But, you know, again, um, I must tell you, when I started practicing law, uh, I was a very angry young man. Uh, probably still an angry old man now, but not as angry. Yeah. And uh, I had had a very bad experience in law school. I was the only African American in my law school for 10 or 15 years, I guess. And um, so I had a little problem with the dean. He would not recognize me when I would raise my hand. Uh, I had a uh, another professor who treated me so good I thought he was giving me the <laughs> more than I was entitled to and then I, but the but the but the most excruciating pain of that experience was that when you leave the classroom and you want to discuss issues that have been discussed in class I was roundly ignored and with the, after a while I just got ticked off and uh, avoided him and went home and did my work but that started me off with a very, very angry feeling that carried over into my life and practice. And uh, for a long time, uh, I was a judge fighter. I mean, I, I didn't trust judges. <laughs> and after about a few years of <laughs> with a shriek and, uh, and a realization that uh, some judge had had uh, sort of awakened my sensitivities a little bit. I was sort of screaming and yelling on some pretrial motion to suppress the evidence or the witness or something in a very bad robbery. <laughs> so he said, well, in the middle of my yelling, he said, Jim, calm down, fascist. And I continued, he says, Jim, calm down, you'll have a coronary, fascist. Yeah, yeah, Jim, calm down. I want to help you. Yeah, did that fascist say he wanted to help me? <laughs> so, 
Sure enough, I had not taken a, a bench trial. It's in the whole, this is, this is 10 years or more in the practice. I hadn't taken a bench trial since the first one because I didn't trust judges. And uh, so I took a bench trial with this judge. <laughs> And it so happened that uh, it was a single witness case. And generally, when there's a single finger case, judges generally have some uh, uh, leniency. I hadn't thought about that because I didn't trust judges. So they put the witness on the stand, and the witness said, uh, he says, uh, well, I was at the gas station. This guy came up with his car, with a green, green car with a black door. And uh, I walked over to his car, and he had a rifle in his hand. He said, give me all your money, or I'm going to uh, uh, shoot you. He said, so I gave him my money, and I left. Do you see the defendant in the courtroom? Yes, there he is. So, cross-examination. <laughs> Mr. Witness, the thug that stuck you up, can you tell me whether he was five foot five or six foot four? No, sir, he was sitting down. Well, can you tell me whether or not he was bald or he had a tomahawk haircut? He says, no, sir, he had on a hat. No further questions. <laughs> so the judge found him not guilty, and I started looking for a psychiatrist, <laughs> and, uh, which was one of the best things that ever happened to me because it, at least it, 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 it brought, oh, it took a long time, but it brought to the fore the fact that I was operating from a failure back in the day of allowing myself to feel the pain of that rejection in law school. And uh, after that, things got smoother. Uh, to, to sort of talk about some of the positive changes, uh, three of my children, two, two daughters and a son, have uh, graduated from that law school. And, um, uh, you know, they had, they had study groups, and, you know, that was a, with, you know, they didn't have the kind of issues that I had. So, you know, th things have changed for the good in many ways, and um, I would say that uh, that's, that was like a 30-year hiatus from the time I left until they went. And uh, so it was, it was good, to, good to see that. Over the many years you've been a lawyer, you've seen a lot of changes in the profession. Mm -hmm. What gives you the most hope about the future of the legal profession? Well, you know, the one thing that, that I see today is that for the first time, uh, I see corporate America giving some recognition to lawyers' talents, irrespective of what they look like, and I like that. I see people uh, like the recent Attorney General who's getting tremendous opportunities to serve some of the larger interests in this community. I see some friends of mine uh, who uh, probably represent uh, major clients whether it's a Sears Roebuck in litigation, because they, they like, they know their skills, because they recognize their skills. I like the idea of the tremendous uh, enhancement of programs for uh, continuing legal education that are out there now, probably inspired in large part by the requirements of, you know, continuing legal education. And uh, I think it's, it serves a tremendous uh, service to the law profession, and it enhances our our legal skills. And uh, you know, I, I I'm I'm very hopeful about the future. Uh, I see uh, a lot of young lawyers, some of whom are not really ambitious, but those who are, uh, you know, I see them doing great work. Mr. Montgomery, how do you want to be remembered? Two things. One. Uh, that I've been loyal to my clients, whether they were big or small, whether they were rich or poor, um, that I've worked hard for my clients and tried to do the very best I could do for them. Um, and I guess I also want to be remembered for uh, hopefully 
elevating to some extent the perception of the black lawyer in our communities. Um, when I came up, uh, the radio image of the black lawyer was a guy by the name of Al Daquin J. Calhoun. That's probably before your time. He was a lawyer in Amos and Andy. Oh. And he was a little bit slow and bungling and stuttering. <laughs> and it, was, it was a terrible depiction of a black lawyer. Uh, and you know, that's, that's one of the uh, uh, things I think that people have seen and that's a part of the plight of the black lawyer. And so that it had been so important to have some kind of examples that would kill those bad images that were out there in the past. And I, I, speak, I, I always speak of my good friend Johnny Cochran who had 18 months or so, not 18 months, I don't know how long it was, on the O.J. Simpson trial and uh, he was successful and um, uh, you know, so people would take notice. And I noticed after he, uh, that occurred, you saw when the TV stations would have commentators on to t talk about legal issues, they started to have some black lawyers from across the country. And I thought that was, that was good.